everybody, this is Hockey Pones, and this is a ship by ship video on 2015 draft eligible player Jakob Zaboral. Zaboral is wearing number 38 in blue for the St. John Sea Dons. Just to give everyone a quick announcement this is the last video I will be commenting on for the season. The draft is less than a month away, and I have a lot of requests. I won't be able to meet all of them, unfortunately, but I want to turn out as many as possible. I just want to give the commentary one last try and end on uh, hopefully a strong note. Anyway, about Zaboral, he is a lanky two-way defender from the Czech Republic, listed on the QMJHL website at 6'2 and 185 pounds. This is his first season in the league, and with that in mind, I think that makes his play all the more impressive. In this game, Zaboral plays on the penalty kill and St. John shorthanded seven times in this game, not allowing a shorthanded goal. Uh, sorry, I mean power play goal. He doesn't allow a power play goal while he's shorthanded. Obviously, you can't allow a shorthanded goal while shorthanded. Sorry. Zaboral also picks up a shorthanded assist to boot. On the power play, Zaboral picks up a power play goal. In total, he gets three points, one goal and two assists en route to a 5-1 to one win. Regarding the positives about Zaboral, I just talked about it, but I really like his utility. He's an 18-year-old rookie who is already counted on to play tough minutes on the penalty kill, but he also eats a lot of minutes on even strength and on the power play. He's not getting sheltered. That just tells me there's more of a chance for him to find a role at the higher level. He's also a fairly gritty player. There's an undisciplined play later in the game where he gets a penalty, but he's able to play a physical game. It's never an automatic disqualification if a player uh, plays soft, but um, but the grittiness just opens up more doors at the NHL level, especially when it comes to uh, play along the boards. Last, and certainly not least, I think he has a uh, very strong hockey sense, especially in the defensive zone. I guess the, way, the best way to word it would be he has a uh, good danger sense. Uh, since he often successfully identifies the most dangerous player on the opposition and tries to neutralize him. I'll point out some of those examples later. Regarding some criticisms about Zaboral, as with almost all prospects, he can get stronger. That includes adding weight. He's 6'2 and 185 pounds, and so, and of course, a few pounds could be added on there. I'm did bring up before he had an undisciplined play, and while every player gets penalties and gets undisciplined with his uh, propensity for grittiness and um, just the fact that he did have that undisciplined penalty, I do just think that he um, needs to learn to have a cooler head at times, especially you know as he gets older. And uh, finally, while he has had a very impressive stat line, of uh, 33 points in 44 regular season games, which included uh, 13 goals and 20 assists. I wouldn't say he's an overly creative player. Uh, he makes good and safe plays, but he's not exactly a player who drives the offense or shows any exceptional vision. And of course, this is just my opinion. Um, I just think that as he progresses to the higher ranks, when NHL veterans hem him in the zone and take away his space, he may find himself getting in more trouble. Um, it is for this reason that I think that he would benefit more from playing in a more structured system or a structured team who already has some options mapped out for him. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now for a bit and let the play-by-play -play guys do the talking, but I will be back in a bit. He is 15th in the league in scoring with 38 points. He's dangerous, and he has the puck once again, carries over the line. Feeds it for 410. 410 sends it in front. That one bounced off of Penny into the corner. 410 gets it back. Here's 410. Spinning, skating behind the net, sending it to Perron on the right side to the point for Gannett. Gannett, left side, drive by LeMay and OJ. Slide period, still 1 1 as the puck is backhanded into the St. John zone and played out quickly by Zaboro. Myers shoots it back in. Picked off by Dundas. He feeds it ahead out of the reach of Marsh. Marsh into the corner. Met by Myers now along the end boards. Dundas nearly came up with the loose puck. Huskies can't get it out now with another opportunity. Perron will play it down the ice. All the way 
for an icing. Two minutes, 49 seconds left. We'll take another break. Through. Tremaine down low. Battling. Noel is there too. Tremaine pushes his man. Penny from behind. Now Tremaine tries to hook the Husky. There will be a delayed penalty against St. John. Three on okay, so while this goes against what I just said about him identifying the most dangerous player and doing a good job neutralizing him, no player is perfect. In this case, uh, Zaboral is watching the play away from him a little too much and not closing the gap on his man to take away the pass. Granted, he still recovers, but you'll see better examples of his ability later. I just want to point out this play um, just for the sake of contrast. To the Huskies, goalie to the bench, cross crease pass intended for Penny. That's broken up and is Zaboral gained near net. Sea Dogs come up with a puck off the face off. Zaboral trying to play Tommy Time Killer here in the corner and he's successful at that. And he just lags around as the period comes to an end and a pretty entertaining period it was. Simply aren't there. They were clogging up those high scoring areas with great precision. That appeared to be an icing call, especially with a team on the power play, but play is allowed to continue. Sea Dogs send the Huskies back deep in their own territory. 35 seconds to go in the man advantage. Here's LeMay. Pushes it on the right side for Perron. He gains the line. Had the puck momentarily stripped. It's loose. Joseph tried to knock it ahead for Dubnik Falls. He got taken down. Fans thought that should have been a penalty as Jeremy Lausanne took down Samuel Dubnik Falls after he had pushed the puck past the Husky defense. The referees, Mr. McCormick and Arsenault, disagreed with the Harbor Station faithful on that one. Penalty is over. The Huskies are 0 for 2 with the man advantage. As Tremaine leaves the box, Doug McFalls forces it ahead just out of the reach of Caron. This shift is where Zaboral picks up his first point of the game, and it's an even strength assist. Zaboral's play here on the power play is a preview for his contribution to the goal as he finds an opening down low to take a shot. Uh, once the penalty expires, Zaboral gets another attempt to take a shot in the slot and the rebound is knocked in. Uh, this is one of those examples where he has very good hockey sense, uh, this time in the offensive zone, and his team is able to capitalize on it. Anyway, back to the play-by-play. -play. Zaboral crashes the net. That pulls Harvey out of position. It out as O'Brien was taken down by Van Bokel. A couple of big boys there, and they have words. Tremaine back over the line, drops it off. Dundas for LeBlanc. That shot hit a leg and ended up in the corner. Dundas picks it up. Sends it down low for Tremaine. Tremaine at the side of the net. Noel can't get to it, and it's gathered in by Nantel. They turn it over. Dundas once again for St. John. Puts on the brakes. Dundas supported by Noel along the boards. Dundas gets loose. Dundas forces it down low. Noel comes up with it. Wrap around attempt. Hangs on, and then his shot is knocked away by Myers. Quick transition. Here comes Alexander 410. Turned aside by Zaboral. Very strong play by Zaboral at the St. John Blue Line. Bouncing puck, batted ahead by Perron, and then LeBlanc will play it up ice for St. John. Nearing the seven minute mark of the second period, Sea Dogs with a 2 1 lead. Zaboral brings it to the line, now turns back, sends it off the boards in front of the St. John bench. It's gobbled up by Noel. Noel pestered as he plays it in deep. Sea Dogs looking to make change. Sports back. Quebec Major Junior Hockey League action. The Ruin Naranda Huskies and the St. John Sea Dogs. Sea Dogs, the eighth ranked team in the CHL standings, leading 3 to 1 here, nearing the midway mark of the second period. Aaron Kennedy, Will McLaren, Dave DeLine, and Caitlin Bailey. Glad to have you with us on this Friday evening, wherever you may be watching from. Here come the Huskies trying. Okay, so here's a better example of how he handles the attack better when. Um, there's a uh, winger off to the side and he identifies the player. Um, you see there's already a little bit of a closer gap with the left wing uh, over to his right, but he's actually going to move on over just a little bit more and basically completely neutralize him and take him out of the play. To get back within a goal, LeMay with a shot. OJ wasn't expecting that one and nearly misplayed it, but he managed to get part of his shoulder on it. And now Zaboral has it for the Sea Dogs. Behind the net for LeBlanc. LeBlanc plays it ahead. That one bounces off of Caron. 
And now LeMay carries it back in. LeMay, drop pass. Hook, there's Highmore. I'm not sure if that's his stick that snapped in half or if it was the Husky stick, but there's current power play and work the puck a little bit deeper. It's the only way they're going to break this Sea Dogs penalty kill you. They've got a strong power play, and they need a goal down by two here on the road, playing their second game in as many nights. Here they come with 43 seconds to go in the man advantage. Wake brings over the line. LeBlanc got knocked down. Puck slides towards the net, and Sebastian Auger will clear it the length of the ice single-handedly. Tremaine is in there deep after that loose puck, but Lozon comes up with it for the Huskies. Lozon forces it ahead for Nance. There's a dozen seconds left in the penalty and fires at the length. Hard in there after it is Joseph. Lozon for the Huskies. Steps in behind the net and carries it ahead. Teams back to full strength. 0 for 4 of the Huskies with the man advantage. Long shot directed out of play. Ventures towards the side of the net. Noel is still loose. Backhands it now for Tremaine. He'll try to get it back to Noel and does. Good work here by the Sea Dogs. Noel to the point. LeBlanc's shot goes wide. Tremaine over skates. Dundas battling with Myers. Myers comes up with it. And the Monconian will play it ahead. And then it's flipped up through the neutral zone. Doesn't hit the scoreboard and play continues. Tessier brings it to the line. Works it on the right side for Dempsey. Dempsey pushes it down low. Shishka is there. But Mantel comes up with the puck. And the Huskies will start back. Led by Jeremy Oje. And he just got smoked by Olivier LeBlanc. Here's Neveu. Back for the Huskies. Moving in behind the net. Neveu gets away from Shishka. And plays the puck out. Van Bokel retreats at his own blue line. Sends it for Dempsey. Dempsey carries it back into attacking territory, gives it to Shishka. His shot ends up in the near corner. Van Bokel charges in, gives it to Tessier. He gets cross-checked through zone. Smallman gains the line, gives it to Highmore. He'll chop it down low. Smallman is in pursuit. Lozon gets there first. Sea Dogs converge on him, and they get the puck back to Zaboro. Zaboro with a shot. That one's over top of the net. Picked up by Highmore. He'll backhand it for Smallman. Now controlling on the left wing half boards. Back to the line. Shabbat holds in. Now for Smallman. Winds, fires, stop. Rebound is loose. But the Huskies come up. I'm just cutting in right here because this is the play where I brought up that um, Zaboro gets an unnecessary and undisciplined slashing penalty, which um, cost him two minutes in a box. And again, this isn't to say that he's a dirty player or anything. I mean, we're not supposed to, you know, just um, put too much stock into one shift or one game or anything like that. But since he does play a little bit more of a um, gritty game and physical game, there are times when he may take on discipline penalties like that, and um, as he matures, he just needs to get a better handle on it. He gains the line, drops it off. Lausanne with his shot. Stopped by OJ. Big rebound is loose as that one fluttered off the goaltender's glove. Now a long shot by Caron ends up in the corner. Picked up there by LeMay. LeMay tried to put it in front for Baudin, but the Sea Dogs come away. Okay, so this upcoming shift is when Zaboral scores a power play goal. It's a pretty straightforward play where he receives the puck in the high slot and he fires a hard wrist shot, which in my opinion could have a faster release uh, into the net. St. John! The replay uh, very early on in this power play situation comes back to the line just out of the field of vision here. Zaboral, you'll see him walk in right here between the defensemen, simply fire it as Harvey going down, as I mentioned, a little too early. A key late second period goal for the dog. Gabot and Smallman get the assist on Zaboral's fifth of the season. Power play tally at 19-21. I wanted to cut in here because while this isn't a huge deal, I like to point out subtle differences. In previous shifts, you see Zaboral park down from the net, even when there's no danger around. However, in this case, he does venture away from the front of the net because there is a dangerous player on the ice, most notably the one that he's covering. And um, so this is just a player that he ventures away from the net from to uh, to cover. This isn't a game big, excuse me, a game breaking play by any means. Um, but I just like to point out that there's fluidity and variety to how Zaboral plays in all three zones. 
The second period counting down on the big scoreboard over center ice. Zaboro loses the puck. They get it in front as that was Cortez centering it. But the green lights are on and this period is over. Today and Kachev of course made plenty of news with the contract with the Edmonton Oilers. It wasn't a contract. And seemed to have just fallen out of favor in Moncton. There was talk about whether he was injured or whether he was just not playing and certainly he's not going to be playing for Moncton anymore. It's certainly a guy that appeared to need some sort of fresh start uh, somewhere else in the league after a very strong start with the Moncton Wildcats his career there. Third period is well underway. Nathan Knoll has the puck for St. John. And the puck is turned over to late offside against the Huskies and play continues. Sometimes when it's a three goal hockey game in the third period, the commentators tend to venture into other Del Paggio and Dub McFalls are there. Dub McFalls tried to play it back for Del Paggio. Back to Dub McFalls. He can't get to it. Del Paggio does and it's just behind Joseph. And the Wild or the Huskies rather start the other way as OJ plays it in deep. That's Jeremy OJ. I'm going to interrupt again here to point out another example of identifying a dangerous player and neutralizing him. In this shot, you see a player in the highest slot who isn't protected at all, and neither winger seems aware. Zaboral does a good job of getting to him quickly and taking away his space before he becomes a good option. It's usually not noticed in this case until someone handles it poorly and the puck is put in the back of the net. So that's why I want to bring it up here behind Sebastian Auger, cycles the puck now for Boucher, Boucher along the left wing boards, tried to go back to the point but it's knocked away and Destick trying to flick it off the uh, Huskies player's uh, twig, just misses and actually results in a decent scoring chance for the Huskies, let's see if they keep taking these chances as the third period rolls off. St. John gets the puck out to center, Shishka, right side, just on side as Tessier brings it in. Big collision there as Dempsey tried to hammer Lausanne and he actually got more of the boards than he did of the Husky player. Huskies can't get the puck out. Tessier backhanding it now for Shishka. Trying to get it back to Tessier. Puck slides behind the net. Shishka pesters Lausanne. Lausanne gets free and backhands it ahead for the shifty Matthew LeMay down the left side. He's forced into the corner, battling with Zaboro. Zaboro dangerously stepped in front of his own net. Penny was there, but disaster doesn't strike for the Huskies. 4-1 is the score. Ruin Naranda will travel to Cape Breton and play the Screaming Eagles on Sunday and then make their way back to Ruin Naranda, and that is just no fun whatsoever. 24 hours, believe it or not, by bus from Sydney, Nova Scotia to Ruin Naranda, Quebec. This is offside at the St. John Blue Lines. Ruin Naranda may not be the middle of nowhere, but you can certainly see it from there. <laughs> Here's Fortana working it over the line. Drop, pass, shot, stopped by OJ. Rebound was there and sliding towards the net. Good work in front there by on the part of Penny as well as Perron to hold the fort, but uh, OJ equal to the task on that one sequence. Not going to score in Sebastian Jose from the blue line. He's out seeing the puck so well and out at the top of the crease. No chance. Minute 25 to go in the power play. So right. you know, they just need to make life more difficult. And that's one thing you can say about OJ. He hasn't had a very tough night so far. He has seen virtually everything. The Boral's clearing attempt hit Dub McFalls, and that allows the Huskies to try and generate something, but then they turn it right over. Dub McFalls loses it. And it's Quinn dropping it off for Gannett. He'll bring it over the line. Gannett on the left side gets away from Tremaine, takes a stick to the face. He's down to the ice. This is the last time I'm going to chime in for letting you enjoy the rest of the video here with the play by play commentary. In this Shift Zaboral effectively separates the Husky from the puck and he backhands it out of the zone. Um, the beauty of the play is really with the two forwards who do a great give and go. Um, I don't think Zaboral was thinking of an attack while making this play. Um, so 
while this is no doubt a great play, I do think that when evaluating a player's offensive ability, a play like this shouldn't really be used, um, even though he did get a point out of it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not a big fan of pointing out secondary assists to suggest they are less meaningful. Sometimes I think secondary assists are critical to the play developing, and sometimes they're more critical than the primary assist. I just don't think that this play in particular qualifies. Uh, anyway, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I'm going to try as hard as I can to make as many videos for the upcoming draft, and that means I'm not going to take the time to provide any more commentary. Um, I also just wanted to announce that after the draft, I do intend to make at least one video for every team who didn't draft a player I already made a video on. That way, every fan base gets at least one video of um, one of the prospects drafted by their team. Um, again, that's the intention of these videos, and so hopefully you uh, enjoy and appreciate that. Um, and of course, this is all dependent on the availability of the footage. Uh, all that said, I hope you all have a good month up until the draft, and good luck between the Lightning and whomever they play in the Stanley Cup Final. I'm making this video the morning after Tampa Bay beat New York, but before Chicago and Anaheim played each other. Um, so, I hope you all enjoy the rest of the playoffs, as well as the draft. I can't thank you all enough for your patience throughout the season, as I try harder to make better videos for everybody. So, I hope you enjoy this video, and you have a great day. Thank you very much. Saboro has played extremely well for St. John tonight, has a goal and an assist, and has been a strong presence on the blue line as there's a drive from LeBlanc that misses the mark. Harvey is down. I'm not sure if Doug McFalls had something to do with that, but the Huskies took exception. Back yeah, the other he, way. He had a little something to do with it. <laughs> Back the other way. The Huskies try to set something up in the St. John zone. And now the puck bounces out.